It is time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are playing Outdoor Survival. If you've been following along, there are scenarios for each new person. It's kind of what I've grown into doing with this iteration of the game, Outdoor Survival, because there are so many people that come through. And it's more fun, it's more um, poignant in a way to attach the scenario to the player rather than have it just be this setting that they enter into and the setting is how it is irregardless of who the person is. Um, so Giraffe, who is a very important person, came in to play last session. She hasn't done anything yet. I hadn't decided the scenario yet, but I'm deciding now. And what Giraffe needs to do, she's going to use survivor rules. She needs to die in the desert. And the reason why I'm doing that is if you followed along with the public the Pablo Origins game, Giraffe had a city that got swallowed by the sands. And so I think it's sort of a ritual to replicate that event in the bodily form so that she goes out into the desert and she's swallowed by the sands. If she dies any other way, she's out of the tournament. If she dies by way of desert, then she wins. Right, so it's Little Red's two-week anniversary. He just has to double that stay there another 14 days and he is successful. Um, looking at other people, Tice, she just got recharged in this base here, ready to try to head back out. Um, Tater as in Tot, she's been stuck here on this hex for a little while now. She had to stay here for two turns and then she got another event which made her stay there for another turn. And that's where we're at. Exciting, Giraffe made it to the desert. She's still gonna have random movement though. So let's see what she got. She got three and that is going to be she gets to move as many spaces as she wants in one direction. So she'll go one, two, or one, two, three, four and she's stuck there now. Giraffe's been doing a great job of dying in the desert. All that stands in her way now is a poorly timed event. That's five. That's going to be the personal one. She rolls a one or two. Oh no, that, 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 okay, so it is a personal one. One or two, and she's gonna gain something. She did not gain anything. She has to remain stationary further, which is gonna bring her unto death. And Giraffe, through that sacrifice in the desert, is gonna move on to careers, and we shall see who is to take her place and what story they have to tell. Milky! Lieutenant Merker! Oh, he's a spaceman. Maybe we can tie that in somehow. Seems obvious. Milky is sent down by um, the warrior space warriors that none belong to in order to recover her body. I rolled randomly to see which uh, building he would start in as his landing site and he rolled here so that's gonna make it so that um, little reds counter has to be reset it is gonna go back to one however because it's his turn now um, I don't know if he wants to stay there or not but I think he will he's pretty comfortable this is his time limit but it's a slow timer it's indeed a slow timer so just to be clear Milky's job is to go here, pick up the body, and take it either to here or here. Likely it'll be here because that's much closer, isn't it? A funny thing happened on the way through the encounter table. If you recall, Nun had a problem where she lost a life level, lose one life level, due to the atmosphere of the Earth or the gravity or some other sciency thing. Milky just got the same thing, which is, which is great. I love when this kind of thing happens. Even in a, in a seemingly purely random game, there are choices to be made, but there's a lot, a lot of your success depends on the role of this die here. Um, it tells a story, and it's that process of telling that story which makes it uh, so that I can continue to do this. Whereas if I was just playing like some game where it's just rolling dice and there isn't any sort of flavor going on, it would be very difficult for me to want to keep doing that and recording t tallies, you know, having the the words 
makes it worthwhile for me. Tater as in tot is in an interesting situation um, that you find in the first two scenarios of outdoor survival, where if you're trying to hit a particular space, it's sometimes easier if you're weaker. She's been overshooting the body of Kevin O, which is what she's trying to discover in order to find closure. Um, and that's what's been happening with her. She needs to be weaker in order to find him, but not too weak or she can't move. Tater as in Todd just had an unfortunate water loss. She got to here and she was going to be at a, at a three step, which means if she moved in this direction, she would find this. But instead she got the water loss, which brought her down to a loss of four life levels. It makes it so she can only move one. So on her next turn, she has to go here. She's not gonna be able to find the body um, because this is the only clear, clear area in the area. It's lucky she was down here instead of up here when that happened because um, she can go here and, and fix herself back up. And you can rest assured that Tater has in got a fortunate role. She got back to this base here. All she has to do is heal up and then manage to get here. It's hard because of her movement capabilities. She can't ever turn, I don't believe, unless she gets a random turn by rolling a one. So it's all moving in a, in a straight direction. So even if she heals back up, she's not necessarily in the best condition to find a dead body. You kind of have to be injured in order to um, suffer loss or something. Tice was cruising along nicely along this trail on her way out, but she just got an event which made her stay two turns. That's going to cause her to lose two life levels, which is going to be pretty hard to recoup out here in the mountains on this mountain trail where she is, especially since she's using the loss rule set, which gives her decreased movement capability. Something to watch as we go forward. Melky headed back down here to recharge. He needs to get to this space. The reason why is I made a ruling that the alien warriors, space warriors, can't recharge at these bases for some reason. They have to be a little too covert or the supplies there don't make sense to them, canned goods, what's that? So they have to recharge at places like this that has a deer and a water puddle so they can eat and drink. He made it down here, he has one movement left on his next turn. Since he's on a trail, he should be able to make it no problem. Uh, there's really no randomized movement on a trail because all you have to do is follow the trail. You can do that, can't you? Even if you're harried by the outdoors, Tice is in rough shape. She made it out of the mountain range path, but she's down to K. She's not going to be able to make it out because on her next shift, she's going to lose seven life levels. So on her next turn, she's going to have to get, have, have some control of her movement and then go here and then just sit while her water goes up and her food goes down and she's subject to all these encounters. She's really on shaky territory, but she's learned a lot. And since we've gone through another round of turns, let's do that roll for you now. See how she does. Three, that's a randomized movement. One space. She only has one space in her. Two. Two is right over here. And that's going to be the end of Tice. Dang. That's harsh. Let's see who we got next. Oh, what is this guy's name? Chappy. That's right. Here we go, Chappy. Welcome. Climb up in the saddle and get ready to ride. So Chappy is a real estate investment. That's his occupation is to be an investment. But I'm going to take that to mean that he wants to invest in real estate. And so he is going to be out in the wilderness scouting for sites. And partially because the greatest fear is doing what others say can't be done. And you would say you cannot find a great place to live out here because there are no services and people slowly die out here. But we have four markers here. We're going to roll randomly to see which would be a good site. Although all this land is owned by the government, I presume, which is why some strange program that doesn't allow helicopters. Um, three right here, and he has to visit all these locations to kind of scope it out. He's going to be using survivor rules. One, where's one at? 
here four right here um, I think you're also there all right and three again six six is oh no it's a visit where little red is little red's on day 13 now he's almost on another two weeks so if Chappie goes there, it's going to have to start over once again. But luckily for Little Red, Chappie's going to have to hit all these other locations first. Chappie's made it to his first site. He scoped it out. That's what that marker represents. Um, Cater as in Tot, she's ready to go back out and look for her date. And then Melky, he got another... He's been spending too much time in the Earth's atmosphere. He got another life level index loss. But he's going to keep camping out, try and get himself strong enough in order to go up and retrieve that body. Uh, we're on day 17 of the month of February for Little Red. Tater as in Tot has discovered the body of Kevin O. Now she just needs to get somewhere where she can communicate, which is a base, and communicate for some help and let people know that there's a dead body out here and then maybe someone will come out and deal with it. Um, then she just has to decide how much work she wants to miss. She's a flight attendant, doesn't pay the best. Um, she's maybe lost her job by now because she's been in the wilderness for a number of days. So she could just hang out and then claim trauma because it's traumatic to see a dead body. Little Red has had his staycation of 28 days, and so he is now successful. Let's see who's going to take his place. Uh, meanwhile, while you're thinking about that, Lieutenant Merker of Space keeps having to stay in this one location again and again because of events. And that's been hard on him. He might have to go back to his watering hole. Oh, Braza. It strikes me how this arc of play and my own mood throughout it has, is mirrors real life, which makes sense because it's part of life, and life is composed of little units of life, uh, which are composed of smaller units of life, which are composed of quarks. Um, in that, there is this initial sadness when you get your first loss that strikes one in their life and then as they get more and more losses one kind of learns to disregard those losses and just start to have fun and that's kind of what I'm doing now in this game of outdoor survival I'm really enjoying the process it's kind of addictive on um, this die die rolling is kind of like a slot machine except there's this engagement with the people there's enough emotional pull beyond the uh, immediate gain of quarters spilling from the machine but I guess maybe that's kind of the same thing. Anyway, um, I've, I've had less and less trouble saying goodbye to people, but maybe those scars are just not felt as much as the game's going on. And I'm just kind of enjoying the story that's, that's coming about. So how our story is advancing is Brezza works for the Attorney General's office. And apparently the Attorney General is the only person who took an interest in um, Tater as in Tot's plea for help, her call about the death of this fairly anonymous person in her life. She's met him on the internet uh, in the wilderness. So as a complaints mediator for the Attorney General, he's going to look into this complaint that there's a dead person on this, I, I guess it's federal land, so the, or maybe state land, and so the Attorney General of that state has sent Brezza out to kind of deal with that complaint. So he's going to, his job next time on the Real People Vault Game Solitaire Mega Tournament is going to be to try to rescue um, Tater as in Tot and the body and bring them back into the more civilized world. Should be fun.
next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. English slash Pasha dash Rue leg one outdoor survival.